Today we're going to be discussing amateur radio repeaters. And, uh, what is a repeater? Well, a repeater is basically just two radios, 69 together, with a duplexer in between. The duplexer handles the, the Vox control and some other shit, but it's really not a complicated machine at all. Technically, you could probably build one in your basement. It's not exactly legal to run your own without getting it verified through the FCC, but just saying, that's how easy it is to, to put one together. Now, what is a repeater used for? Well, when you're using a handheld radio like this, or even a mobile, you're not going to get out too far because, for one thing, the antennas on this isn't that big, and you're not going to get too much elevation, and you're running off of batteries, so the power output isn't going to be that high. So, what they do is they take a radio, and they put it in a high location, whether it be on a tower, on the top of a mountain, usually some place that they can get it up really high. They use really high grade, feed, high grade feed line that's probably too expensive for you to afford to use at home. And it's just the optimal situation. Uh, and they can put out a lot more power. And what it does is it will repeat what I say on this handheld radio. It'll repeat it out, but much louder so that you can get farther distances. Uh, how it works is I would transmit on one frequency and it repeats it out on another frequency. Uh, that's what we call an offset. Uh, I'm not good with numbers, so I need to look at my laptop, but yeah, if you're transmitting on a two meter band, the offset is plus or minus 600 kilohertz. If you transmit on 70 centimeter, it's uh, plus or minus five megahertz. Uh, I'll put in the show notes for other bands what the offset is. Uh, but like I said, it, it receives on one frequency and transmits it back out on another frequency and at a much, much higher power. Now, this could get quite noisy. Repeaters could pick up you know, other transmissions, you know, accidental noise or whatever. So they use what's called a PL tone uh, to verify that the signal should be repeated out. Uh, I'll list in the show notes the different set of PL tones, but it's a tone in a sub subaudible. Yeah, I can talk today. A subaudible frequency, something far below what humans can hear. It's you, when you transmit with your radio, it sends out this tone, and that tells the repeater, "Okay, this is meant to be sent back out. This is meant to be repeated, and the repeater will repeat it." Most repeaters use them nowadays. You might be able to find a couple that don't. But I'd say 90% out of them use, use PL tones. One of the first things to remember when transmitting on the repeater is listen for a couple minutes. Make sure there isn't somebody else talking. You don't want to be rude and jump into somebody else's conversation and step all over them. When you do transmit on the receiver, on the repeater, when you, <clears throat> when the person you're talking to is done talking, Wait five or ten seconds before you transmit again. This gives some time for somebody else to, to step in, you know, identify. They might want to join the conversation, or there could be emergency or some kind of priority traffic that needs to get in. Uh, as with everything else in amateur radio, emergency traffic takes priority. All the rules that apply to normal traffic don't apply to emergency traffic. When talking on a repeater, even on simplex, it doesn't matter what class you have. No one has higher privileges. No one can step on somebody else. Nobody owns the airwaves. Whether you're a technician, you're an extra, or a general class, you don't own the airway. A, a, a technician doesn't have to give up the frequency they're talking on to an extra or a general. It just doesn't work that way. The only uh, the only way that you do have to give up the frequency you're talking on is to emergency traffic. They have priority over everything. If somebody comes on and they have a legitimate emergency, you either help them out or get the fuck off the airwaves. That, that's just plain simple. That's how, how it works. You can also connect to phone lines with a repeater. I'm not quite sure how to do it yet. I haven't done it myself. But... Uh, this isn't as popular as it used to be now that cell phones are available, but 10 years ago, 
you can get on the repeater and as you see there's a keypad on the radio you can dial DTMF tones and actually connect to a landline or cell phone whatever dial a phone through the repeater everybody on the repeater with a scanner whatever can listen into your phone conversation so you know, be careful, don't go dialing up your bank and punch in your PIN code and getting your account balance and stuff like that. Phone calls on the repeater should be limited. You know, you shouldn't sit on there for hours at a time. You know, quick, quick phone conversation is fine. Not too many repeaters now that I know of still have phone patch enabled for general use. But most of them, if you get on the repeater and you dial 911 on the keypad, it will connect you immediately to a 911 operator and you can use that for emergencies uh, now let's see but yeah when talking on the repeater or even on simplex uh, just use plain English none of the none of the bullshit that you hear on CB radios uh, you know people don't use 10 codes or or sit there and slur and sing their call signs and stuff like that. That's all bullshit for CB radio. And all you do is piss everybody off on ham with that. Just use regular English. Uh, don't worry about making mistakes if you're new. People cor will correct you. Not, not in a negative way. They'll just make suggestions and whatever. And uh, repeaters are a lot like IRC. Every repeater you go on has different etiquette. They, you know, they... Not exactly rules, but people talk differently and they have different guidelines and everything and you know, they'll inform you if you if you do something different than how they like uh, sometimes repeaters are dominated by groups like uh, Aries races stuff like that and it tends to be majority of the people are emergency services and they tend to shun people like me that aren't involved in emergency services and they're just people interested in making new friends or whatever, just find another repeater or just use their repeater when they're not using it or whatever. Don't get discouraged. Uh, every repeater is different. You know, different communities, different groups. Uh, we're going to cut ahead to some footage. Uh, Fox and I were talking on the, the uh, Bears Network. I think it stands for Bristol Emergency Services. Uh, we were able to communicate. I'm in Bridgeton, New Jersey. He's up in Brooklyn, New York. I was connecting to the violin repeater, which then connects to a couple other repeaters and it relays it all the way back and forth. Uh, he's up in Brooklyn, New York. He was connecting to a repeater in, somewhere in North Jersey. Uh, I'll put in the show notes where it is. I forget exactly where it was. And then uh, Ugster was up in Central Jersey listening in with his Pro 95 scanner. He doesn't have his license yet, but he's working on it. Uh, and he was able to hear both of us and we'll cut to some footage to show show the communications that we made we also were able to talk to somebody out in I think it was Lancaster Pennsylvania and towards the end I'm not sure if we got footage of it or not but somebody from uh, from Maryland came on and uh, made contact with them so uh, I hope you found this useful and uh, watch the footage ahead and uh, we'll be covering more amateur radio segments throughout the rest of the season. Well, as we were saying before NYPD decided to go and roll through my actual recording Four studio. studio. Uh, we're pushing, right now I'm pushing at least a 30 mile link and then it's what, about 150 miles from the repeater that, uh, on Bears that I'm entering down to you in, the, in my land? It's somewhere like that. I map quested it out in uh, driving directions. It's about, I think, 120 or 130 miles. So it's probably a little bit less radio wise, depending on exactly what path the repeaters are, are taking. I'm not really sure. But yeah, somewhere around that. It's still pushing a, a really good distance for three watts. Yeah, this is actually a, a really widespread repeater network. This goes all the way down to Maryland. I've actually picked up people from uh, Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, I don't have line of sight with the repeater because of all of the uh, apartment buildings and whatnot that are in the way where I live. So, but you do what you got to do, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure once eventually uh, you get a place where you can put up a better antenna, you, you'll get even farther. Uh, you be able to talk to people all over the place. But yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive that you can talk so far with such a low-powered HT. Uh, I, have to, I have to operate at 5 watts here. I tried bumping it down to half a watt and then to 3 watts. Uh, it didn't even peg the repeater at half a watt. At 3 watts it did, but Ugsta reported that it was quite noisy. So I bumped it back up to 5 watts, and he says it sounds pretty good. Yeah, it really seems like you're having a hard time pushing the signal to get into the Vineland. You're using the double zep, right? Yeah, I'm using the double zep, but I haven't been up on the roof in months to check on it. I have no idea. Uh, you know, there could be rust on it or whatnot. I'm not sure. Uh, if I go up and clean it up, I'm sure I'll get a little bit better signal. Or if I actually uh, mounted it right rather than tying it up with string while I have it right now, it would probably work a little bit better. This is more or less a worst case scenario, but it's working, so I'm not complaining. Well, before you start hobbling up to the roof and playing with the antenna, hold out on that until the last minute. I'm going to see if I can try to get you a 70 centimeter Yagi antenna. I need to build a few anyway. Uh, CR gave me a really good idea about using spoke, uh, the, the, the spokes from an old bike tire as, uh, as the actual improvement elements. Those should actually hold up pretty well. I've been wanting to try that. So if anything, I can always design a 70 centimeter Yagi for you. And next time you come down to New York City, come on, pick it up. Well, the thing is, a lot of people are really more concerned about power output rather than a proper antenna. And, you know, really, if you don't have a proper antenna, you're not going to push the signal out. It could just be that the, uh, the double depth that you have up there right now is just the SWR match with the 70 centimeter band is a little off. Uh, do you even have an SWR meter yet? Not yet. I've been looking at them, looking at them on eBay. They're, they're not too expensive. I'm probably going to pick one up. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Too many other projects to do. The extensive length of RGA that you're using on that, even though that it, it is rated for the frequency, it's going to throw the SWR off to the double depth of it. So uh, it's really not too hard to actually retune those. I'm actually going to be doing a segment on the show about that soon, so I can show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. But, you know, either way, if having a proper antenna is always more important than having high power output. Like I said, right now I'm only pushing three watts. Matter of fact, I'm going to bump this down to actually half watt, see how far I can push out. Yeah, if you're pushing a crap signal, no matter how much power is behind it pushing it, it's still going to sound like crap. Yeah, you know, power is not always a good thing, especially when you have way too much SWR and you blow out the finals. I've known people to do that. All right, I'm pushing only half watt. How well you picking me up? You sound exactly the same. There's, there's really no difference. They only half a lot of power pushing about a 40 mile length to a repeater, and I, that'll, that'll re-repeat it to what? Maybe 300 miles away? I mean, I know I've gone into the far end of Pennsylvania, but I really haven't actually done a, a line of sight plot point. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's what Google Maps is good for, huh? Yeah, I'll look at the I'll look at the map more uh, when I'm typing up the show notes, or whatever, and try and figure out the exact square mileage that this network covers. But uh, it's pretty extensive. It's it's really impressive. What the 
hell was this call sign? Go ahead, calling station. Can you repeat your sign, please? I missed it. N3, JBD, November 3rd. We had Bravo Delta 4. Uh, yeah, guys, I'm uh, standing here in the backyard in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, so uh, this is a, a great system. How much wattage was he pushing? pushing? Andy, so uh, far away, we're actually recording a video right now. Uh, explaining to some some friends online uh, about repeaters and just explaining general amateur radio stuff and how it works and uh, we're demonstrating how far you can go. We're using uh, FT60 little FT Yesu FT60 radios and it's it's amazing how far we can go just pushing a half watt. Hey Roger, very good. Uh, yeah, I'm running a uh, full power five watts on the HT here to the uh, the Honeybrook link. So, uh, very good. Well, I, I can't hold it. I just want to let you know that uh, uh, the system works great, at least out to uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. 73 guys, N3 JBD, uh, portable. I'll be uh, listening. Roger that. Uh, thank you, Station. It was great to hear from you. And, uh, you know, I have to agree with you, it is a really nice repeater system. Unfortunately, uh, I'm a night owl myself, and I'm, the uh, repeater turns off at 10 o'clock, and I don't wake up until then, so I miss out on all the fun. Plus, I'm actually in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, New York, and I've got a lot of tall apartment buildings around me, and unless I go to the waterfront, I really can't get a signal because my landlord won't let me put an antenna on the roof. But, you know, that's all the fun of amateur radio, trying to make do with what you get your hands on.